Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. My name is Marcus Burton. Hey, I'm GT Hill. We're going to take a slight detour from some of our earlier conversations and just take a little mini-series to talk about the cloud. And we're going to look at it from a few different perspectives and talk about what's available in the cloud and why it's become so awesome. But also, we're going to talk about different deployment models and uh, all of those goodies. So uh, thanks for joining us. Let's just jump right in. Yeah, I have to admit, you know, I'm, I don't mind burying my soul. I'm old now. Uh, <laughs> when I originally heard about the cloud, I thought it's just hardware in the sky, right? I take mm -hmm. my hardware and I put it somewhere else. And, you know, there are companies that I remember doing that, you know, decades ago. They still do, of course. Uh, but they're really with the burden that it took off of the IT person was, you know, physical security and, uh, you know, high speed internet, good cooling. Um, you know, those were the kind of infrastructure things that were really nice that, that someone else would handle that. That's what I thought the cloud was. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's still, a, that's still a part of the cloud today, which we call infrastructure as a service. But I, you know, I almost think of that a little bit like the way that we think of contract, like construction contractors, where, you know, you hire out some service that you'd like, you know, you want to have something done. Um, so you hire it out to a construction contractor and they come along and provide all the tools that you need in order to build the thing. Yeah, I uh, have hired people before, but I also, almost every project with me starts with me going out to buy the tools to do the project. I mean, I've got yeah. plasma cutters <laughs> and I've got, I got every metalworking tool and woodworking tool and I still half the time end up hiring it out. Uh, right. <laughs> And, but yeah, I have no idea what a plasma cutter is or does. It's awesome, man. It's <laughs> it's like yeah, it's like melting metal with your finger. It's uh, it's great. I think even that difference between the two of us though is basically what it is that we want to talk about, which is that everyone thinks of the cloud differently. But there's basically different ways to make use of the cloud based on your interest in like how much you want a cloud provider to do for you. So like what you described earlier you know, with the hardware offload is basically one of what we call sort of the three service models of the cloud or the three ways that they offload for you. And that's just infrastructure as a service. I'm sure there's probably hundreds of different terms, you know, that people use to talk about as a service models. And that's usually about where I tune out for some reason. I don't know why infrastructure or as a service just tunes me out immediately. Yeah. Marketing departments you have that? do that. Oh, oh yeah. I also get <laughs> tuned out uh, with a, Hey honey, can you? <laughs> my my brain gets a little foggy and I feel like I need to be elsewhere. No, but I mean, you got I, all those <laughs> you got all those tools. Do something with them. I feel like we're married now. Thank you. I appreciate you. Uh, <laughs> appreciate you uh, saying that. Sorry. No, but I mean, I, here's an example. Terminology and one of the things I'm sure people started this video. If they did start it, didn't want to hear another video about a cloud. But the reason we're doing this is because terminology gets so ingrained that sometimes we forget what it means. An example is, right. is that I was on a call with you, it seems like years ago, and someone on the call said, well, let me play devil's advocate. And you said, why would I do that? And it was so interesting to me, it clicked in my brain that when you think about, oh, I'm gonna be the advocate for the devil, I was like, okay, Marcus <laughs> has got a really good point there. You know, right. maybe maybe that's something we need to think about. But the same thing happens, you know, it's. It's marketing departments, which I'm not going to blame them. I've been participating in many of this uh, over the, the right. decades, but right, yeah, that's right. that's it. That's one of them. So, so if we sort of tease it apart, then these like the as a service models again. Try not to tune out on that phrase, but you know, there's basically three: infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. And you know, infrastructure as a service is what GT described earlier. So you know, someone else taking care of all the rack space and cooling, and basically they're going to give you physical compute, storage, memory. Well, it's virtual compute, storage, memory, but they're hosting it for you. And then you basically have access to that infrastructure, the network that connects it, and you can basically build with it whatever you want so you've got the tools and the construction analogy but you don't really have any of the other resources to build it and you just got to come up with on your own what is what it is that you want to build on the infrastructure blank slate to build on yeah and they were responsible still for upgrading operating systems you know maintaining security patches and all that in infrastructure as a service you know they still did that they the it administrator person uh, but they're doing it remotely you know that that wasn't really handled but then that shifted as well, right? I remember that shift where, uh, you know, we all have kind of given up some control in our life for added features, and that's one of them. You know, hey, you know, I was some people were resistant to moving their servers elsewhere, 
And then that next shift was moving, you know, patches and, you know, maintaining the, the core infrastructure of a server, the operating system, uh, mm -hmm. databases, email, services, et cetera. Right. Yeah. And that's what we basically call, you know, platforms as a service. So if we think of, again, these three things, infrastructure, platform, and software as a service, they're basically three tiers of increasing sort of control. No, no, no. Control is the right word, but increasing sort of, you know, offload. You're, you're going to give it to someone else to do, like you said, you know, those security patches, um, platforms and tooling that you use to build the thing. So it's a little bit like, construction analogy you've got the tools the infrastructure and now you've got you know all the hardware and the lumber and maybe even a building plan and you've just got to then figure out how to put it all together into something that you really want to build so it's kind of the second step in having a more complete kit to build on yeah but that moved I mean, again there's been there was that other shift that you've mentioned software as a service that that the next natural step was let's just give you know, let's just get it turnkey, right? Where you can right. just log in. This is th this evolution that's happened that we're talking about with infrastructure and platform and now software is we've experienced that as a consumer. Now we're using Office 365 and Gmail and uh, Adobe Suites and all of this is as a service. In fact, that's yeah. the preferred model. Um, there's a lot of financial advantages to that model as well, as it's not a one-time purchase. You know, I'm paying, I bet I have a dozen monthly bills that I, you know, 10 bucks a month. Right. Yeah, so so that software side is kind of, they, they give you a complete package. Again, coming back to the building analogy, it's they just give you a complete package. They built the house for you. You can shop around and look at seven different houses if you want, right. but they're all already built. You don't have to worry about the building at all. So, you know, someone else takes care of that for you. And, and really that whole evolution, we, we kind of skip by the platform as a service talk a little bit. But really, if we come back to that again, that's why software as a service has really been the magic that it has, because the platform and toolkit that's offered by cloud providers today is so robust that it enables um, it enables just a, a pace and a kind and a depth of development that was just never possible before. Okay, so platform, so you're going back to platform now, which is great because in my understanding you correctly that that is, that's where the innovation is really coming from. So again, we're, we're using these softwares as a service, the Gmails and the, you know, all of the offices and all that of the world. Yep. But that, that transition really happened at platform to start right. with, because there's really, yeah. so there's this division inside a platform, the way I'm thinking of it, which is IT tools, right? That evolution where my operating system and SQL databases and exchange servers and all that, that was something yeah. that I as an IT person would directly work with, right? That was my first platform as a service. But now you're saying there's platforms as a service that are available, not to the, that the average IT person would not use, but, but the developers would use. Right, so yeah. people that are developing the software as a service are actually using more advanced right. platforms as a service. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, the whole toolkit. So I mean, it's all those things. It's OS and patching and security and all. But then it's also this whole toolkit to build on. So if you think about the way that platforms evolved, so if just think about Google and Amazon, for example, they both had other stuff to build at scale and as they were building it they had to create their own tools think about okay google's going to build some machine learning you know features for gmail to detect spam and so they start building these cool machine learning algorithms and they realize hey look we could actually take that core platform that we use to build our own gmail spam detection and and offer that as a service in our cloud you know aws does the same thing for you know customer shopping recommendations so they build ml tool toolkits and then make those available. I mean, it's the same thing with data analysis. Let's say you want to build an application that relies on Elasticsearch as a data analysis, uh, you know, a database and compute engine, but you don't want to deal with any of Elasticsearch. You can just pay for it as a platform. Someone else manages it. Someone else, um, you know, stands it up, maintains it, optimizes it for you, you know, maintains versioning, and then you just build your application on top of it. That's crazy. I watched you log in just a few days ago, log in to a cloud provider, and mm -hmm. it had all of the different things that you could turn on by just checkbox. It was, yeah. you can checkbox some ML services, you can checkbox Elasticsearch and 
uh, you know, all these different things. I was just blown away. I really was. I, yeah. remember, I was looking at it going, that is just crazy. And it makes me excited for the future. But that, right. I mean, what you're saying, that helps me understand, hopefully uh, other people as well, understand that those are available to us. And that's, you know, I, I guess companies like Extreme are taking advantage of that, right? We're using right. those platforms and then building our own software, is that correct, on top of it to go out and do cool, amazing things? Yeah, I mean, it's like any software as a service is really built on top of, of usually a combination of infrastructure as a service and platform as a service. So we take some, you know, ML, you know, tool set from, you know, Google or Amazon or Azure or whatever, and we can build our own ML algorithms using that tool set, which actually alleviate, like for, for every business out there that's building something, it alleviates the burden of operating all this stuff and building all this stuff that takes loads of expertise. Like the number of companies that have the expertise to build advanced ML are actually fairly small. Or, or not just not just the skill set, but the, the the depth of bench to say we're going to build this advanced ML tool set. It's like 10 guys or 15 guys. But it's like you could say we got three really good ML guys that know how to use the tool sets that are available in the cloud and build something pretty awesome. So it, it changes the pace and the scale at which you can build even being a smaller company. So it really oh, it just changes the world, really. I mean, yeah, I, literally. I've heard data scientists, which we still don't know what they do, but we've heard I've heard data scientists <laughs> say, without the cloud, we couldn't do what we're doing today. And I never really understood that truly until now, that it's right. because of the infrastructure services, the infrastructure, the platforms, that they have the tool set to quickly develop these cool things. Yeah. So, so, yep. so we have infrastructure, platform, and software. I think I have a good handle on that now. But let's look at this maybe from a little bit different perspective. Is I'm also hearing about different ways to deploy these very things. Now, right. we've been talking about cloud, which in my mind, cloud should be a singular thing. But I'm hearing private, local, hybrid, public cloud Mm -hmm. which some of those are almost contradictory. Private cloud, right. local cloud right, right. feels very contradictory. Yeah. So what's up with that? Well, I mean, I think sometimes the way that I think about the cloud is like an ob a 3D cube, an object with 3D, three dimensions that you can rotate and sort of describe and look at from different perspectives. So what we've been talking about is basically the service models of the cloud, things that you can get from the cloud. What you just created is basically, let's rotate the cube and look at it through another dimension and think about the deployment models of the cloud. Um, so we talked about service models, that's deployment models. Um, and if we get paid by the video, we should uh, we should just maybe pull that in and make that a second part of this mini series, a, a different video. I'm good with that. So yeah, we'll pick that up in another video. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate you, GT. See you next time. Awesome, love you, man. Thanks, everyone.